Welcome back to Moving the Chains here on YouTube with Nuts and Bolts Sports. I'm Ashmir and uh, last week was very hectic for me so I didn't get to film anything so I apologize if you're waiting for my updates. I know last week was insanity in the NFL. So was this week, week 10. We're getting closer to the end and I feel like time is going by so fast. I don't know why football season has to end. <laughs> But anyway, so we'll start with the Alabama versus LSU game because that was definitely the highlight in college football over the weekend. Tua versus Joe Burrow, and that was just, I would have said Tua's last name, but I really don't know how to pronounce it, but um, that was a, a great performance in Tuscaloosa, and LSU pulled through and won 46-41. to um, Burrow was basically unstoppable every time they had the ball he was driving down the field he was making sure they put up six points you know if they had to just kick a field goal I feel like that wasn't like his number one option he had to make sure that they had the lead the entire time and uh, they were leading early in the first half and until the, about the end of the third quarter until Bama like picked up the pace and Tua who just got ankle surgery about 20 days ago you know like He's still recovering. He was questionable and listed as day by day until game time. And so then for him to go out there and just play the way he did, he was still mobile. He was passing deep passes, you know, in the entire game. And he just, he played very well. I mean, these two top Heisman contenders in initially, it's just... It was just a really fun game to watch, super exciting. LSU hasn't beaten Alabama since 2011. Perfect performance. You can definitely see these two playing again. Um, the AP polls came out, and it's like the top five teams are SEC. So I feel like SEC teams are going to be in the championship for sure because they, they always have great talent. I mean, it's hard to find anybody that's better than them in the South. They're always recruiting great kids, and they're playing really well. So... Definitely top game, uh, loved it. And the Ducks play Arizona this week. They had a bye last week. So for the Ducks, they've actually moved up to the sixth spot. So woo, congrats for them. That I, you know, I, I know they're gonna win the Pac-12. It would be awesome to see them as like one of the top contenders for the championship. I don't know if that will be true if Justin Herbert, I mean, the other two quarterbacks I just talked about were very, dominant down the field and I feel like Justin Herbert makes a lot of mistakes throughout the game that kind of rely on the rest of the team to make up for it which is hard to have a quarterback that's always making mistakes that could cost the game when in reality we could have won the game like when we lost against Auburn we were leading the entire time so we should have won that game but just a lot of errors that came through and we would be you know 9-0 so that'll be they're playing Arizona next week this weekend um shooting it's going to be a win and then so I'm going to start this new little segment called flash football where my producer my guy whatever you want to call him my analytical dude my cousin that was on the episode a couple times a couple weeks ago um he's going to ask me questions and I'm going to talk about my opinions about them so let's start uh is Cam done in Carolina is Cam done in Carolina? Well, I just saw an Instagram post today saying that he's eyeing the Bears. So I'm going to say yeah. And I want to say for good reason. I mean, maybe he's just done with the Panthers or maybe he's just... The Panthers are done with him. I don't know who's done with who. But I think it's definitely time for a change for Cam. And I don't know which Cam is going to show up in the next team that he's a part of because I haven't seen Superman Cam in a while. So... Maybe he needs like a new dynamic, a new environment, and yeah. So I'm going to say yeah. Uh, your top three MVP picks. Top three MVP picks. Okay, Russell Wilson, because his performance against the Niners was just amazing, and he's been playing that way the entire year, and he's continued to build a team that's like full of respectable, cool guys. So Russell, definitely number one. Number two, I'd have to say Christian McCaffrey because he's been carrying the Panthers O-line the entire season. He's such a dominant running back. I mean, he's one of the top five running backs leading in rushing yards. And he's just, he's a great player all around. So definitely him for my number two. And number three, um, I'm going to say Lamar. It's like a tie between Lamar and Patrick Mahomes for me, but Lamar Jackson has just come up and brought this Ravens offense to a whole new level of elite. He's changed the way that they play together. He's kept like his hype self with the team. Like I follow them on Instagram and I love all the posts that they have. Like 
it's just like super genuine and you could tell that he's committed to being the best player and like the best leader and he plays so well he's so fun to watch so mobile so he's so active he's always running down the field he's doing great things so those are my top three and then uh, what was your favorite play this weekend my favorite play this weekend was probably Michael Thomas catching the ball on like the tip toe end of the sideline even though the Saints lost but that was pretty dope you know it's hard to do that for anybody I couldn't do it <laughs> nor have I tried but so now let's go over week 10 in the NFL because all of the games were so exciting I actually didn't know which ones to talk about because there were so many good things that happened I went to the Raider game on Thursday that was such an exciting game uh, I do think the Raiders could have won by a little more just because the defense played so well I mean Philip Rivers threw three interceptions and he threw an interception in the end of the game after they had about five chances to score and basically win. Um, Derek Carr, you know, last week he played so much better and this week he's still, he went back to like his old ways. He was short, throwing a lot of short passes, you know, it wasn't like very dependent on him as it should be. You should be seeing him throwing dimes down the field. Last two weeks he's been doing that and those really created the energy that the team needed to continue to you know, spread out on the field and play a lot better. So I would like to see Derek play better this week against the Bengals. Uh, there's still a brand new offense. They have a new quarterback that's replaced Andy Dalton last week. And so Finley played against <laughs> Lamar Jackson last week and got whooped 49-13. to So I hope to see Derek become who he was two weeks ago. So if he could watch that film again and play that way against the Bengals, which I believe is going to be a W. It's going to be a really fun game. I'm actually going to go to that one too. I'm pretty sure I'm going to every Raider game until they leave Oakland because I doubt I'm going to be going to Vegas. Um, yeah, but Phillip Rivers, man, the Chargers have like very good pieces in their team. You know, Melvin Gordon, I had felt like he'd been silent all year until this game. He finally stepped up. He was finally rushing, being a lot more aggressive. I know he's been injured, so it's been harder, but just not a lot of strong performances from everybody throughout the year. And, you know, I just think this game kind of put the nail in the coffin that they've got to readjust. And Phillip needs to be a lot more aware of his surroundings. The Raiders' defense is not one of the toughest defense in the NFL. So, you know, they, they put a lot of pressure on him. They were spread out down the field. He couldn't get the ball out. It was just not his best performance. Um, so let's talk about also the Kansas City game against the Titans in Tennessee. That was such a crazy game. Ryan Tannehill really came through in the last two minutes. Like, he rushed, he ran down the field and, like, got 15 yards and then led them to score a touchdown and initially win the game. And so him and Derrick Henry together, like, played so well. Derrick, Derrick Henry is a monster. Like, if I ever saw him on the street, I'd just be like, damn, this guy could bolt those through a defensive line. And he does, and he did, and he continued to do. Like, he had, he played, Derrick Henry had two touchdowns. He had 188 yards. Like, he is, he was just playing at his A game. Ryan Tannehill had 181 yards, and he was sacked four times, so the Kansas City defense did a little something-something, but they won 35-32. Um, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, you can't blame the guy because he put his all into this game. He, he literally had 446 yards and three touchdowns and zero interceptions, so obviously he was doing his job, but the defense wasn't doing their job at holding Tannehill and the Titans back, especially Henry, as I'm saying, and so... The defense needs help. Um, another insane defensively strong game was the Falcons against the Saints. I mean, I don't think anybody predicted the Saints to lose this game, right? Like, I definitely didn't. I was like, yeah, if you're betting, you should totally pick the Saints. They're playing in New Orleans. Like, it's going to be loud and rocking. Atlanta's 1-7. and seven, Like, whatever. And then here they go. They stuffed Drew Brees. He was sacked six times, okay, six times. And for the first half, he was held for, to one of five of third downs. So that means that he only got one third down of five possessions. And that's not very good. For the entire game, he was three of 12. So, I mean, the Falcons defense was here to, like, 
literally not here to play. They, the divisional games truly prove that this is like a different type of a matchup. They don't care what their record is. They're just here to not be the worst team in the division. And so they, the Matt Ryan did well, but you've got to hand it to the Falcons defense. They were the ones that put everything together. They were the ones to hold Drew Brees back. All they had were field goals. Like he couldn't even get into the end zone, you know, like that's just so unheard of for Drew Brees, especially when he's like fighting for his spot with Teddy Bridgewater because I actually wonder how Teddy would have played in this game. Would it have been differently? You know, would he have been more mobile than Drew Brees was? But who knows? And uh, the last game, of course, will be the Niners and Seattle because that was like definitely one of the best games of the year. I mean, the Seattle defense was... Both the de it was a battle of both defensive, to be honest. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo couldn't get anyone to catch the ball. I mean, there were seven drop passes from his receivers. First loss for the Niners, you know, against Seattle, and they came in hot here in the Bay Area. They played super well. Russell Wilson had three 232 yards and one interception and one touchdown, and Jimmy had 248 yards, same thing, one touchdown, one interception. They were both sacked four times. Like, the defenses both came in a lot harder than just Jimmy's offense, honestly. I think Russell Wilson <laughs> did great offensively. He was super, just his typical self, like, just creating plays. He has mastered the scramble in the pocket. Like, there's just no, there's nobody doing it like him right now. So, next week, the Niners are taking on the Carroll uh, Cardinals in San Francisco so um, I'm assuming that'll be a win like last time and probably another high scoring game just because I don't I don't think Jimmy wants to lose back to back and the Seahawks take on the Eagles and I do believe the Eagles are kind of going down in the rankings I think Seattle's gonna win this one um, my predictions for this week because I'm usually right um, I'm going to say Steelers beat the Browns. The Steelers are sliding up out of nowhere, definitely. Rudolph is making a name for himself. And Texans versus the Ravens, I'll be a really great game. I'm hoping Lamar pulls through, but you never know with Deshaun Watson. He has such a great, they're both very compatible in the way that they play. They're, they're both just like mobile, athletically rushing. They're just creating, doing great play calling, so that'll be That'll be a good matchup. I'm going to pick the Ravens, of course, because I'm like a Ravens fan. Next week, Drew Brees takes on Jameis Winston, and I believe this will be a matchup to see if Drew Brees is really worthy of like the, the title that he's been holding and carrying his team because Jameis Winston, even though he keeps losing, he puts up high numbers, right? He's always scoring touchdowns. He's playing, he's playing like a quarterback, but he just somehow loses in the end because – the other team outscores him eventually. So if the Saints couldn't score any touchdowns against the Falcons, who haven't only won one game, then I'm like excited to see how they play against the Bucks. Um, definitely, I mean, I'm rooting for the Saints, but you know, let's see if they if they score 14 in the first half, then they have a chance to win. But like, I think Jameis Winston will score 14 in like the first quarter because he's gonna try to keep this momentum high that he's on. Okay, and I need to give a shout out to my fantasy league because they were sending me some pretty terrible trades and the trade deadline ended on Saturday and I don't know what everybody's thinking, like I'm a fool or something. So first I'm gonna show you my roster, okay? It's not amazing, but it's also not terrible because Christian Kirk put up 37 fantasy points last week and that's a lot and Evans puts up like 40 every week, so. Thanks to him, I'm actually winning, and the Patriots defense. But yeah, look at check out these trade offers that I was given. I'm just like super confused. Asking for a second round draft pick and like for Robinson, who's not even playing, and like Devontae Freeman, like he's like back and forth. And I was almost, this is how worried I was because of how much smack talking that I was getting. I was going to trade my fourth round pick for Marlon Mack, and I think he only had like nine points against Miami last week. So. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do that because I would have I've already given up a third round pick for Kelsey. But if you need some fantasy advice, definitely write it below and let me know because uh, right now it's all dependent on the waiver wire and there are some people that are shining through. I am sure my team has been picking them up just to keep them on their bench so I wouldn't figure it out. Um, I would definitely look at Jacob Hollister, the tight end from the Seattle Seahawks because he played very well in this week. Like I mentioned, they're going to play against Philly, and I can see him getting a lot of um, a lot of passes in that game and just being very active. And 
uh, compared to the rest of the team, I'm sure they're already owned. Metcalf, I'm, I'm sure, is taken. Chris Carson's already taken. So if you're looking for a tight end and he's out there, he's definitely a great pickup. And who's another receiver? Oh, I got to thank the Rams defense because they got me 20 points with that pick six last week. I was trying to get the Ravens defense, which would have been a good pickup as well, but I didn't bet enough on the waiver wire because I didn't know how it all worked. You know, I think the fantasy gods are on my side this year. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of, it's pretty dry out there. I'm looking at, like, who's available for me. Larry Fitzgerald just came up. I don't know if that's a good pickup or not. If you have him out there, maybe. Um, they're playing the Niners next week, but... Yeah, so it's, I kind of don't have a lot to give for fantasy just because I feel like everybody's swooped up the quiet ones. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any comments, questions, whatever, DM me. Write a little comment here on YouTube. Uh, we've also got an NBA podcast that we've started. I'm not a part of it yet, but if you want to tune in, I'll definitely put the little image here so you could check it out we've got three of our writers that are talking nba every friday all right i'll see you next week thanks for watching yeah, 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 yeah. Hey,